what's going on everybody welcome back to another video today we're gonna to be doing some wi-fi hacking but specifically cracking wpa2 pre-shared key wpa2 or wi-fi protected access to is a network security technology commonly used and provides unique encryption keys for each wireless device and the way that we're going to attack this is there's something called the four-way handshake so if you're familiar with networking and you think of the three-way handshake sin synac ack uh, synchronize, synchronize acknowledgement and acknowledgement, then it's kind of something like that. It's the phase in the process that the device goes through before it actually is able to connect and do things on the wireless network. What we're going to do is attempt to crack that four way handshake and access the wireless network. And as a disclaimer, because I don't want to get hit with anything if you guys use this stuff for illegal activities, I do not condone any illegal activities in this. This is all for the sake of demonstration and demo purposes so that you are more familiarized with the types of attacks that attackers do on these Wi-Fi networks and what you can do to prevent yourself from being a victim. All of the attacks done in this video are all done on my own devices and my own access points and my own hardware. What you need is an external wireless adapter that allows packet injection. So when you're purchasing, I actually have two of these right here. I have one from TP-Link the TLWN722N and I also have the second one right here by Alpha which is, I don't know if you can see the uh, code, probably can't, let me just spell it out it is the AWS036NH model um, looking up on Amazon, this one here, the TP-Link, it seems like the chipset it's not the same one that they used to sell so I'd also be like, you know, cautious about that when you're going ahead and buying specific adapters. But if you just look online, uh, you can see if you could just find one that would work for you. Um, I just keep two because I find out that sometimes the TP link actually works better than the alpha. Uh, <laughs> I also have it connected up to this <laughs> crazy looking wizard wand <laughs> of an antenna, of an omnidirectional antenna. It is a nine DBI antenna. Also, when it comes to purchasing external Wi-Fi adapters, after making sure that the chipset actually works uh, with packet injection, make sure that it also works with 2.4 and 5 gigahertz frequencies because there are some uh, Wi-Fi networks that only operate on 2.4 and some Wi-Fi networks that only operate on 5 gigahertz uh, bandwidth. And you can't see the 5 gigahertz bandwidth when you only have a 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi adapter. So what you want to do is make sure that you get a wireless adapter that operates on both 2.4 gigahertz and 5 gigahertz. So without further ado, let's go ahead and let's do this. I started off Kali Linux and the first thing I want to do is actually check the interface and make sure it's connected. So you can do that by checking all the wireless interfaces, type in uh, iwconfig. And we see it here as WLAN0. Uh, 82.11 we see the mode is managed and what what it means by managed mode so there's two modes well there's there's actually three modes I think but the main two we're gonna we need to focus on is managed mode is essentially I only listen for packets that are for me basically so only things that are coming for me I only have access to so I say someone's standing in front of me but we're in a whole room full of people right let's say you're in, you're in a ballroom and there's a bunch of guests and you're only sitting across from a table from one person and you guys are having dinner and you're talking to each other and you, you only listen to what they're telling you. Everyone else just sounds like complete gibberish because you're not really focused on them. You're only focused on the person that's in front of you. But what monitor mode is, it's like, you know, I don't care about that barrier anymore. I want to listen to everyone. All right. I, I don't want to just listen to what this person's saying to me. I want to listen to what everyone's saying uh, at the same time. So I'm going to listen for everything. That's basically the difference between monitor and management. Managed mode essentially listens for things that only are coming to it. Monitor mode is you're going to listen for everything. <laughs> you don't care at all. You're just going to listen to everyone that's around you. So to put this device into monitor mode, we can use Airmon ng. So we just Airmon ng start WLAN 0. So WLAN 0 being the interface, the wise interface. So we start that. Wait for that to finish. And now if we check the, uh, if you check again for the interface, it will change name. So now it says WLAN 0 mon, and then it shows mode monitor. And then we see the frequency on 2.4 gigahertz. Like I said before, that it only operates on 2.4 gigahertz. 
So now, after we put it into monitor mode, now we just want to listen around and snoop around for what targets are around us, right? So let's do air dump dash ng and then the device name. So here in this case is WLAN zero mon. And just have that run. I'm just going to be blurring out all the stuff that isn't really important at the time. Wait for this for a little bit. And then after you're done, you just hit control C and I'll just finish it. It'll just stop it. So the main one that we want to focus on is this up here. The crack me with the, the little smiley face. This is the one that I set up just for the purposes of this demo. Since we want to listen on this specific one access point, we could just do this. Error dump dash ng wlan zero mon the channel six bssid. You can see I put this in already. The MAC address of the access point. And obviously the channel six, channel six, and then W to write it. So after we do capture that handshake, it's going to save it into this directory. So actually, let's just put handshake and we have that running. And now it's just going to listen to everything specifically on there and only all the devices that are connected along with it. From here, we can do one of two different things. One, we can sit here and just wait in to capture that four way handshake from any client device that attempts to connect to this access point. Or we can actually force ourselves to get that four way handshake by sending the authentication packets, which are basically reset packets that are telling the access point, hey, disconnect every client that's connected to you. And then from there, when those clients attempt to connect back, we're listening to everyone, right? Because our device and our interface is already inside of monitor mode. And then we catch the four way handshake that way. A way that we can actually force this is already by using a tool in the Aircrack NG suite called Airplay NG. So let me just open up a text editor real quick and take down the access point MAC address. Copy this. And then we do Airplay dash NG dash zero for D auth. Um, right here, we can either do zero and zero will send an infinite amount of deauth packets um, but I usually just like doing five because five is, is more than enough for this so now we put a for the access point MAC address this part is optional we can either do dash C to specify a specific client if we don't do a dash C then it will just automatically deauth every single client <laughs> as connected to that specific access point I usually just specify a client because um, I don't want to deauth everyone and throw up major red flags everywhere so I kind of go back and see what clients are connected and then actually note this down just copy the mac address and i put it in here and then lastly the interface name so here wlan zero mon so if we just recap got airplay ng we got zero for d auth we got dash a for the access point mac address we got dash c to specify the client that we wish to d auth that's connected to the access point that we're specifying here and then the name of our external Wi-Fi adapter. So now if we just hit enter, we see that it is sending the authentication packets. So now if we look back here, I have to wait in a little bit. Currently my phone is disconnected because it just got de -authed. But as it connects back after being deauthenticated, we can see that it says WPA handshake. So now we can stop this. Now if we do an LS, we can see all the files pertaining to that capture from that four way handshake. Now that we've captured that four way handshake, let's try and attempt to crack that handshake. We can do that using air crack dash NG dash A2 for uh, attack mode for WPA, uh, B for the BSSID of the access point, dash E for the ESSID. So the ESSID was crack me with the little smiley face. Dash J for the cap file. So it's just handshake in this current directory dot cap. And the uh, the word list that we want to use. So we'll just use rock you. Share word lists. Rock you dot txt and the cap file again. So let's just do slash. Actually just handshake dot cap. And now we run it and let it attempt to crack it.
and we were successfully able to crack the handshake. So password one with a zero taking place of the O. So let's see if that is true. Let's actually disable monitor mode. So let's just do this. Let's stop WLAN zero mon. Let's go back to IW config. See if it's on manage mode, manage mode. Now let's attempt to connect to crack me. And we saw it was password one. So let's actually show the password. P A S S W zero R D one. At the moment we can see down here that it access points is not associated with anything. So that's meaning like, yeah, I ain't connected to nothing. So let's connect. Give it a second. All right, check it again. And we are connected. Successfully connected. So a way that you can use to protect yourself from these types of attacks, use a pretty good beefy passphrase. So let's say for example, let me open up text editor. Oh, it's already open. All right. So we got this here, right? Instead of using something like like uh let's say uh funny sunday right something like this let's say using a passphrase would be the sun is bright on sunday or something like that right like it's a passphrase it uses spaces numbers letters symbols so I kind of highly doubt that something like this <laughs> will be showed up inside of a password list. So yeah, basically using things that wouldn't be found easily inside of any type of dictionary. So you want to incorporate letters, numbers, symbols, special characters, you know, everything all across the board that would give someone a headache trying to brute force. So that's about it for this video. Hope you guys liked it. If you did like it, hit a thumbs up, subscribe if you enjoy this content. And uh, yeah, catch you in the next one.